for these on. Okay, it's seven o'clock. All right. Good evening, everyone. I'll call the meeting to order and ask that you join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you all for coming. I know it's um, a little unnerving to be out and about, but um, I appreciate you um, making it a priority to be here. Um, it's hard to start tonight's meeting without addressing the topic that's heavily weighing on all of our minds, the COVID-19 um, crisis that we're dealing with. Um, as you can see, if you're watching at home, we've taken several measures for tonight's meeting to, uh, in effect to protect the health and safety of citizens and officials, including reducing the number of staff in the chambers and increasing the distance between us at the dais. And if I'm not sure what's on camera, but we have two council members who are sitting in the front row um, out in the audience to participate. Well, I think he's on camera. Thank you. Uh, before I recognize the town manager for an update, I just want to let everyone know that I'm thinking of you, especially those of you that have uh, parents that you're taking care of or family with, uh, with other compromised health issues. So I think I speak for my colleagues um, in saying that one of the things we love about Herndon is how the community comes together and supports each other, especially in a time of crisis. And we will get through this together even if we are physically apart. Um, I wish you all safety and good health. Um, and I will recognize the town manager. <laughs> uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, members of council. I don't think it's still. I don't think it's on. Do I stand here and I'll just? It's on there. Oh wait. So oh. Was... All right. Thank you. I'll sanitize my words. All good. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of council. services for our wonderful community. I applaud your leadership, the leadership each of you is showing tonight. It's not on. There it is, it's on now. Is it on now? No, it wasn't. It's, 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 I think it's the video. Is it on now? Yeah, Test? And then I'll save it on the left. All right. I applaud your leadership, the leadership each of you is showing tonight, leadership at a time when most of us would rather be somewhere else. And on behalf of the grateful staff, I thank you for being here um, in these very unusual times. Uh, I know I'm speaking the obvious, but these, this was unusual in the way in which it quickly came upon us, the dramatic effect it's taken on the toll of our community, our businesses, our citizens, um, our staff and their families. And it is beyond any modeling we could have done for fiscal uh, stress it's beyond any modeling we could have done for operational stress, yet we are adapting day by day to meet the challenges. I just want to give you a quick recap of the last three weeks. Management team has been working feverishly to prepare to be where we are today. We had three major overriding concerns as we went into our preparations. One was force protection. This includes protecting our community as well as our staff. The second was the focus on continuity of services, particular with particular attention to the tier one core services that we provide each and every day. Things like police, refuse, water, sewer, and transportation. And we also, the third overriding guideline that we were operating under was to appropriately respond and prepare for the fiscal impacts of this pandemic on the town because it's impacting the nation as a whole and it is impacting us here as well. So let me provide you a particular update on some of the things that we've been working on, some of the things that people at home need to know. And as always, I encourage everyone to go to our website, www.herndon-va.gov, for updates. We're updating it regularly every day as decisions are being made and as we're adapting to a very changing and fluid environment. As of tonight, all town facilities are closed to the public. That does not mean we will stop working. 
the town will work. The town will continue to perform its missions. We will get the job done for the community, for our citizens, for our businesses, for you. It will happen. I just encourage folks that want to engage with us, do it via the telephone, do it electronically. Go to the website to see the various options you have to engage staff to serve you on your behalf. You can still call HPD as you always will, 911 for emergencies or use the non-emergency number for things that are of lesser import. You can still enter work orders on the website. You can still get building permits. We're still doing plan review. If you want to pay us, please, we'll take your money. Come on in. We're ready to, we're ready to conduct business. Staff is engaged to meet these, these demands and many other services. But I also ask that folks bear with us because we're getting used to a changed environment. We're getting used to working in a teleworking environment, which we normally don't operate in. We're get, we felt the need to disperse the public works operations staff into two task units, one of which is engaged da on daily operations, while one of them sits in reserve just to mitigate any potential problems we might have with infection in the building so that we can minimize and continue operations on. So with that in mind, we've had to lessen the workload of the public works operations people to half what they normally would do. So again, I just reiterate, I need, I need folks to bear with us during this time. It's a very unusual time for everyone. As of today, all parks are closed, including the golf course. This is pursuant to the governor's order, and it is what every other jurisdiction in our area is doing and it's what every what's happening in Maryland and DC as well all events all town events through the end of April are canceled or postponed the details are on our website again I encourage people to go to our website for information we examine events and make determinations almost every day so please check that website often for updates we've enacted a series of staff policies to promote workforce separation Social distancing, hand washing, sanitizing, both hand sanitizers to all of our employees, but as well as sanitizing workspaces to make sure that it is safe for them to work. We instituted a centralized sick leave reporting structure to quickly address problems as soon as they arise so that we could get a sick employee out of the environment as quickly as possible and anybody that was exposed to the sick employee to get them out of the environment as quickly as possible and still allow them to telecommute and do their jobs. We've moved as much work as we possibly can to telework. Now that said, I can't police by telework. We can't, we can't go out and pick up refuse by telework. So we still have to have staff here in town and they are here doing that work. We've been aggressively promoting the use of technology options to meet both external and internal meeting needs. These closures and changes and many other changes to services were enacted with a focus on saving or on, on protecting the community in protecting the workforce of the town of Herndon. And they, they are essential for us to continue operating throughout this emergency. From a fiscal perspective, over the past three weeks, we've also prepared. We've enacted a hiring freeze. We've enacted a freeze on capital purchasing, except grant funded, except things that were grant funded. We, we froze training, travel, we eliminated the use of vacancy savings. We enacted a freeze on all O&M spending not directly related to COVID-19 or our core missions. And we prohibited the use of overtime and comp time with the exception of public safety and other emergencies. These efforts will serve to partially make up for the significant lost revenue as a result of these dramatic changes to our economic environment, where it has truly come to a standstill in many, many of our sectors. That's for our current fiscal year. We are happened, this couldn't have happened at a worse time for us from a budgetary perspective. We've been working for months and months and months on an FY 2021 proposed budget that I have to buy code deliver to you on April 1. That budget had gone to the printer when this truly hit. So we, I will deliver that budget in six days pursuant to my, pursuant to my uh, charge. That said, that budget is truly no longer operative. We are right now working on, an, uh, on, on some budget alternates that address the economic situation in the pandemic events as they, as they exist today. I will present that document to you in the near future. Similarly, I've moved the, the April budget adoption schedule to May to give us April to sit down in work sessions and talk about the budget and how it's evolving, to talk about the economic situation and how it's evolving. 
so that we can have a budget that is realistic going into next year and that pays honor to the economic climate that we find ourselves in. I'm hopeful where we can get a place where we can adopt in May. And I also am really thankful for your forbearance as we move forward, because this is, again, a very unusual time, a very unusual set of circumstances that we keep adapting to every day. So for the past three weeks, we've been working primarily on internally focused things, force protection, uh, continuity of operations, fiscal stability. As of this week, I felt, feel I wouldn't say good, but I feel better than I have in three weeks, that where we're starting to pivot to external. How do we get back to serving our customers in the manner in which they expect? How do we approach some of the problems that the businesses are facing moving forward? How do we, how do we approach serving our citizens in the manner in which they've become accustomed? So we are pivoting in that direction. So with that in mind, I've authorized us to move ahead on grant-funded projects, that money in the bank from, from the state and from the Fed that is sitting there ready to be used I've authorized us to begin. With that in mind, the environmental remediation of the Subaru dealership site will begin tomorrow. And that is part of the Brownfields grant that we received from the state back three years ago. We are starting to start to gen up other similar such projects in order to let's capitalize on, this, on the economic environment and, and put that grant funding to work. We're beginning to get our workforce engaged, albeit remotely through teleconferences in other services for our citizens and our businesses. That's been our focus starting this week, to get back to doing what we, what, we're, what we need to be doing here for the town. But as we keep moving forward, I encourage everyone to keep checking the town's website for service and event updates. The COVID-19 pandemic is deeply affecting this town. It's deeply affecting our citizens, its businesses, and in this governmental organization. But to move forward to a place where we can hold electronic meetings, to be in a place to quickly adapt and react to events in what I have to characterize as one of the most sustained, fluid environments I've worked in in my career, where things are really changing minute by minute, and we are adapting ourselves minute by minute to these, these various challenges. To be in the position to assure core governmental services throughout this emergency we needed you here tonight. So I want to thank you for your leadership. I want to thank you for being here. And I also want to take a second and also thank the management team. Over the past three weeks, I've put them in very unique and new situations. I've been very demanding of them. And they have responded, and they have responded well. I'm, I'm, I, I couldn't be more proud of the work they have done to prepare us to sustain operations for as long as this takes. But with that, I thank you, Madam Mayor, for my time and yield back to you. Thank you. Um, so I will move to the general portion of the agenda, which contains three items that relate to the declaration of a pandemic disaster. Um, they are uh, Resolution 20G-12 to adopt the Town of Herndon Emergency Plan dated June 2015 and appoint an emergency management coordinator for the town. Resolution 20G13 to declare a local st a state of local emergency and disaster and ordinance 20023 to implement emergency procedures and effectuate temporary changes to address continuity of government operations during pandemic disaster COVID-19. Um, I'll recognize the town attorney for a comment and we will have separate public hearings on each item and each item will require a roll call vote. So Madam Town Attorney. Thank you, Madam Mayor and members of council. Um, as you know, as, and as the town manager has reminded you, we have been working uh, feverishly to um, get to you the things that you need to perform your duties um, in a safe and continuous um, manner. And I apologize for my speaking slow here. I seem to have lost my screen. There we go. Um, one of the most basic things is the emergency management plan. Now, those of you that have been on council for a few years know that we do have an emergency management plan. It has been in use. Um, it has been working well. But in um, assessing and analyzing what we needed to address this crisis, um, we discovered that it had never been formally adopted by council. 
and nor had the chief of police, who is named in the emergency plan, ever been formally uh, appointed, named by council. So a step we need to take um, this evening, very simple step, and you have before you a resolution to adopt the town of Herndon's emergency management plan dated June 2015. Um, even prior to my arrival, <laughs> and to appoint an emergency management coordinator for the town being uh, the chief of police, Maggie DeBoard. Um, this plan is essential, um, not only for the town of the Herndon, but for the region. Our plan, um, as well as other plans in the area, um, are coordinated and um, ensure that the county and all the other jurisdictions are operating together. Something that we have learned in the last 20 years is essential to address, um, address emergencies like the one that we're in. Um, in order for the town to fully com utilize um, the management plan and everything contained therein, we are asking that you approve this management plan, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, emergency management plan, and formally appoint the chief of police, Maggie DeBoard, as the emergency management coordinator. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there questions for Ms. Yates? No, I got to remember to look down in the audience. <laughs> um, okay, thank you. So you've got the floor. Are you going to? Um, well, I, I thought we were going to vote at the end. Concurrent. Okay. You're right. Concurrent okay. Thank uh, you. reports. I apologize. No I'm, I'm, I did not bring my book tonight. I picked up the wrong book. Um, the next thing seems like uh, it is something that we should have already done, um, but we need to actually um, take what the, um, the, um, the emergency management coordinator, Maggie DeBoard, has already um, entered a declaration of a state of emergency, which I think is clear from the other states of emergencies that have already been entered. And while it might seem that we're following along and what, you know, isn't this a moot point at this time? It is not. In order to affect our emergency management plan and um, do some of the things that we need to do, some of the things that the manager needs to do and the emergency uh, management coordinator needs to do, as well as uh, avail ourselves of some of the funds and other aid that is available, we need to adopt um, the declaration of emergency. Um, so this evening we have before you um, the uh, declaration for you to adopt um, for a local state of emergency and disaster. And it's very important that it also include the term disaster in order for us to be able to proceed on to the continuity of government item. Um, that is a definition um, disaster, the definition of disaster that is included in the Code of Virginia specifically addresses pandemic disasters. Um, so uh, with the um, entry of the, of the uh, declaration, we can proceed on to the next item, which is the continuity of government ordinance. By state code, um, the Code of Virginia permits local governments to adopt pursuant to 15.2 1413 of the Code of Virginia ordinances to provide for the continu continuity of government uh, in emergencies or disasters. Um, in an attempt to define operations and actions in this new environment, we recommend that you um, adopt this ordinance. It details several general methods by which uh, the town will continue to operate uh, during the emergency, including electronic uh, meetings for all boards, uh, for council and all boards and commissions, um, fulfilling local government responsibilities, um, including um, uh, actions by the uh, manager, um, specifically empowering the manager with all responsibilities and powers heretofore conferred conferred upon the council by the town's internal administrative policies resolution, which essentially was adopted by the town to govern some budgetary um, items that typically we bring to, that are brought to the council when we have the time to advertise, the time to have meetings. Um, at this point, as the manager has emphasized, um, this environment is very fluid. And I can attest to the fact that 
when you come in in the morning, it's one set of facts, and in the evening, it's another set of facts. Uh, the manager needs to be able to respond to that and has requested, and staff um, agrees that the most efficient way to do this would be for the term of the uh, ordinance, which would be six months from the date of its adoption, which is pursuant to state code, um, to allow this to occur. Also, the manager uh, would be enabled to approve any transaction pursuant to uh, Chapter 30, Section 30-311, uh, which pertains to um, the amount of um, checks um, that that he can sign or, or um, contracts that he can approve currently. There may be a need to per make purchases that are greater than um, the limits that he is currently allowed to do. Um, it would be um, unfortunate if we had to wait to have a council meeting to have approval of that or to advertise it even. Um, Significantly empowerment to redirect or suspend town services to preserve the health and safety of um, citizens and to be empowered to sign all negotiable instruments necessary for the function and continuity of town operations. Um, I would like to go back to um, um, conduct of government for one further item. Um, we have been planning, we have uh, do not have it perfected yet, to be able to um, conduct meetings entirely by electronic means. So the next time that you meet, um, if this ordinance is adopted, um, it would be by electronic means and um, with provisions for um, uh, citizen participation as well. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions or if there's anything that the manager um, can shed any light on that I did not. Uh, I think, believe he's happy to do so. Okay, thank you. Are there questions? Uh, yes, ma'am. Just please clarify that the six months is the longest it can be and once the emergency is over, if it's in three months, then we go back to business as normal. That is correct. Uh, code section 15.2.14.13 provides that the period can be up to six months. That's what this ordinance provides, up to six months. Um, it was felt to be most prudent to provide for the longest period of time. Um, and if the, the uh, declaration of local emergency is lifted prior to that, then we would, I would presume that council would also want to um, repeal this ordinance. Thank you, other questions, anyone? Yes, sir, Mr. DeCall. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you for explaining the situations here. Uh, my question is, when it comes to uh, town of Herndon, our density is much higher than Commonwealth of Virginia or Fairfax County. So whatever the protocols that has been set by the governor for the whole entire state, can we do anything addition to that or we have to completely follow what state mandates to us. For example, our density is higher. That means if somebody gets uh, infected, the rate of transmission will be much higher in town of Herndon than the rest of the uh, Fairfax County or, or even Commonwealth of Virginia. So can we put more uh, uh, you know, protocols in terms of social distancing or even like closing the non-essential business or anything or we have to completely rely on what the state mandates at this time? Uh, a couple of different things, and I'll certainly defer to the manager if he wants to add something. Um, our current authority um, regarding health matters lies with the health department. We do not have our own health department. That would be the county health department. A lot of those social distancing rules, even the closures, um, um, have to do with the amount of people in an establishment have to do with health regulations. To the extent that um, the county identifies any additional um, sorts of uh, measures that can be taken in a denser populated area like Herndon, uh, we certainly would be coordinating with them through the emergency manager, um, as well as if our um, emergency management coordinator, the chief of police, um, can identify um, something that needs to be addressed and it falls within the police powers that the town actually has, um, I feel certain that uh, she would bring that forward to the manager or to the whole of council. I do not believe anything has been identified yet, either medically um, or from a public safety standpoint. 
Um, any other questions for the attorney or the manager? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so um, with that, um, we will take action. Um, the first item um, is resolution 20 G 12 to adopt the town of Herndon emergency management plan and to appoint an emergency management coordinator for the town. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion on the motion. None from me. Anyone? Okay. Um, then I will ask the clerk to please call the roll. Councilmember Baker. Yes. Councilmember Delagula. Yes. Councilmember DeCall. Yes. Councilmember Friedrichs. Yes. Councilmember McKenna. Yes. Vice Mayor Olam. Yes. Mayor Merkel. Yes. That motion carries unanimously. Uh, next is resolution 20 G 13 to declare a state of local emergency and disaster. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion on the motion. Anyone? Okay. All the, oh, I'm sorry. I'll ask the clerk to please call the roll. Councilmember Baker. Yes. Councilmember Delagula. Yes. Councilmember DeCall. Yes. Councilmember Friedrichs. Yes. Councilmember McKenna. Yes. Vice Mayor Olam. Yes. Mayor Merkel. Yes. That motion carries unanimously. And finally, Ordinance 20023 to implement emergency procedures and effectuate temporary changes to address continuity of government operations during the pandemic disaster COVID-19. So moved. Second. Discussion on the motion. Okay, seeing none, I will ask the clerk to please call the roll. Councilmember Baker. Yes. Councilmember Delagula. Yes. Councilmember DeCall. Yes. Councilmember Friedrichs. Yes. Councilmember McKenna. Yes. Vice Mayor Olam. Yes. Mayor Merkel. Yes, and that motion carries unanimously as well. Um, with the actions just taken by council to declare a state of local emergency and disaster and to implement emergency procedures, the April 7th town council work session and April 14th town council public hearing will be co uh, conducted by electronic means. The town will communicate how the public may participate in these meetings. And as the manager said, please check the website for uh, additional information. Um, information about the electronic meetings will be forthcoming from the town clerk. Um, the town council will also be briefed on how, how we will participate um, coming up. We, um, we have the luxury of a fifth Tuesday in March, so it gives us a little bit of time to, to get this all organized for everyone. Um, individuals of the members of the public may also submit written comments on agenda items, of course, and writing to the town clerk at town.clerk at herndon-va.gov, which will be made part of the record. And again, we will be um, getting in contact with the public about how to participate electronically moving forward. Uh, we have three sets of minutes for approval this evening. Is there a motion to approve the March 3rd work session? So moved. Second. Discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? That motion carries. Is there a motion to approve the March 10th public hearing minutes? So moved. Second. All right, I'm going to get that one to Bill and that one to Sheila. <laughs> get through these. <laughs> Discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? That motion carries. And finally, is there a motion to approve the March 17th work session minutes, which is advising that the meeting was canceled? So moved. Second. All uh, discussion on the motion? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries. Mr. Town Manager, do you have any additional comments for us this evening? All right. Um, comments from the council? Do you have any comments for no. us, Mr. Uh, McKenna? In lieu of what's going on, absolutely not. Um, okay, Mr. DeCall? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just want to take this opportunity to thank our town manager, Bill, <laughs> uh, town attorney, all the department heads, and our staff for carrying out the operation smoothly. Even we are not, you know, going through uh, a great situation at this time. The, the the dynamics is changing all the time, but carrying out the operation so smoothly and um, you know making sure. The, the staff is taken care of, our residents are taken care of. I just wanna say thank you for great leadership you guys have demonstrated. And um, you know, uh, at this time, uh, I just wanna urge whoever is watching this video, please, uh, this, I mean, uh, public hearing, please practice social distancing as much as you can and please follow all the CDC guidelines, guidelines even though you have heard that thousands of times before, but I'm still reiterating because the situation 
gets worse and worse, but we can make it better if we, if we, if we follow the guidelines. And um, I've been advocating that again and again. We can go to beaches again. We can go to, uh, you know, cherry blossom again. We can go to vacations again. But more importantly, right now, we have to protect ourselves, our family, and the community. And I hope everybody follows the guidelines as strictly as much as you can so that, you know, we can flatten the curve as soon as we can. So thank you for being understanding and thank you council for taking the actions and thank you staff. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Friedrichs. I was going to say much of what uh, council member to call said. So just uh, add my, my support to his. Thank you. Ms. Baker. Mr. Dahlia. Madam vice mayor. Yes, I'd just like to say thank you to staff again and for everyone who's trying to help flatten the curve. This is really serious and please stay away from each other as much as you can like we are here on the dais. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I concur with my colleagues and appreciate everyone uh, coming out this evening. Um, let me make sure. Okay, so we do have a couple of uh, public hearings. Um, the first one is Ordinance 20023 to authorize the use of eminent domain for the acquisition of temporary and power utility easements property owned by Valerie J. Winstead as the sole successor trustee for public use by condemnation for transportation facility improvements to Van Buren Street from Spring Street to Hernan Parkway. And um, I will open the public hearing and recognize Lisa Yates for the staff report. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this is uh, to support one of those projects that the manager has told us needs to go on, uh, even in the face of this crisis, as much as possible. Um, you are very familiar um, with the Van Buren Street project, improvement project. It's a longstanding CIP item. You have seen um, many uh, land um, transactions um, for eminent domain come before you. Uh, this particular one uh, did come before you previously, but there was a um, situation where we had an intervening lien put on the property. Um, we were unable to file the deed that you had approved, so uh, we could not proceed um, with the actions um, by um, uh, voluntarily. Um, so at this time, um, because we have been unable to um, consummate uh, things with the bank, I will say, um, we are now seeking um, that council um, grant the authority um, to proceed um, with eminent domain to um, gain the interest in property that the town needs to pursue this project. Um, it is a very a relatively very small 101 um, square feet in one situation, in one um, instance for temporary easement for the town and a 129 um, square foot um, easement um, for Dominion. Very small um, in dollar amount as well. Um, the anticipated land acquisition um, costs are already included in the current budget and staff is recommending that the uh, ordinance be uh, approved as drafted. Um, and in fact, the, um, uh, the property owner is awaiting your action as well. Uh, we would ask that you approve the ordinance. Thank you. Are there questions for Ms. Yates? Okay, thank you. Uh, this is a public hearing, uh, so I will ask first um, from the clerk, have we received any written comments on this item that you're aware of? No, Madam Mayor. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Uh, Town Manager, is there anyone in the lobby waiting to speak? No, ma'am. Okay, so seeing no comments, I will close public hearing, move to council level for discussion and action. I'm Mayor. I move approval of ordinance 20-0-24. Second. We have a motion to approve made by the vice mayor, seconded by Ms. Baker. Discussion on the motion? No. Yes. I did receive um, a comment from a member of the public privately who um, didn't understand this, so I just wanted to reiterate that this is the fifth iteration, at least, of these properties coming before us. Um, this is not opposed by the owner, and um, we're just moving ahead with the project. Thanks. Thank you. Um, if you've received comments um, on items on our agenda, could you forward that to the town clerk for the record? Um, further discussion? Anyone? Okay. 
Um, then do I need to call the roll? Yes, once again, um, I will ask the clerk to please call the roll. Councilmember Baker? Yes. Councilmember Diagula? Yes. Councilmember DeCall? Yes. Councilmember Friedrichs? Yes. Councilmember McKenna? Yes. Vice Mayor Olam? Yes. Mayor Merkel? Yes, that motion carries. Um, and the next item is um, Ordinance 2022 to approve the assignment of a power utility easement to Virginia Electric and Power Company um, for the same property. And I believe that uh, the town attorney has some information for us. And with, with council's action on the previous item, we would withdraw this item. Okay, so does that take council action or can we? It does not, it, does it is not. withdrawn. Okay, so with concurrence, we will withdraw item number nine. Thank you very much. Is, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? And that concludes our agenda this evening. Madam Mayor, seeing no other business, I move we adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? We stand adjourned at 7.36 p.m. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you. Put the top on that thing.